Okay, so, the love song of John Kerry. It's a bit of a takeoff of the lo love song of John Prufrock, which Eliot wrote, of course, too. That was in the Times. And the Francis actually liked Eliot's early work, but not the later work. I'm really saying that. It's a little bit too lost in time present, time past, and that sort of stuff. Okay, um, in the dedication, Francis says, when I wrote of love, I wrote well, even showing forth some fraction of his glory. That's John Carey, I think, when he wrote of love, and he wrote it very personal and intimately. And we talked about how Baba said that stay with God gave life um, to God speaks. Well, in God speaks, you've got this line, I'm sure there's somewhere, the love of longing for the Lord. <laughs> well, here it is, all fleshed out in concrete uh, terms of the, of the lover calling out um, for the, to the beloved. And Francis, actually, I can recall that him saying that um, Baba said to Francis, who is this John Kerry? He's <laughs> moved me so much, who is this person? <laughs> and um, I'm sure he uses this persona so he can have this John Kerry and he can be sort of speaking to him as his conscience or something, even as God. You know, take it easy, John, do this. So as a poetic little um, technique, he can be distant from him. And, in, and if he just spoke about himself, he wouldn't have got that distance. So he, I think, purposefully crafted it that way. So he can speak, but then in the poem it flips around, then it, then it becomes him. Um, you know, he does play with it a little bit, but it's a very thin persona you have here at John Kerry. Um, so this has gone over a number of times, and it's, a, it's really Francis' um, background. I heard from Adrian Rawlins that uh, he got the Kerry bit from uh, Kerry Street, where um, Ozzy Hall lived in Melbourne. Um, that's where he got the name from. But I think, uh, did I say that? It's, a, it's a, really the jewel in the crown, this one, I think. It's the shortest book. And um, it's really Francis, it's illusion singing to reality. This is singing to reality here. Um, this is really the, for me, I think the heart of the book in a way, the lyrical heart of the book anyway. Um, there is a, a passage. Um, in this, this guy, anybody have A.K. Ramadan? He mm. wrote a book called The Dance of Shiva, and he wrote these poems in Tamil, the devotional songs to Shiva. Eric really liked that book, and um, he's a great critic. And he writes in the Ramayana, he says, Early in the Ramayana, the sage Valmiki watches a cruel hunter arrow shoot down the male of a pair of loving birds. The sage feels in himself the grief of the bird circling around its dead mate, curses the hunter, and suddenly becomes self-aware and realises that his curse has a certain rhythm and metre, and he decides to compose the entire epic in that. Mm -hmm. um, that was, and that became the sloka. This is the verse. Um, the incident, the second verse here, second paragraph, embodies an important Indian conception of poetry and creativity how the feelings of real life become structured into poetic emotion, the rasa, as Velmiki soka or grief found itself in a sloka or stanza. So something came up in life and it struck him and out came the form. Ward talked about the form and so on, but they're unusual, they're not, they're not standard English forms, that's for sure. And I think he gets the, the inspiration, which is like the melody, they say you can always judge your composer by the melody. But then the form is the harmony. He did put a lot of craft and apply his intellect to the inspiration to shape it. But the inspiration comes and then he's really crafting it up. He's really doing it, giving it full power. In the crafting of it, he gets the full force coming through it. The poetic experience really happens on the page. He's shaping it up. He's really getting it there. He's really honouring that inspiration, because the inspiration is slightly, you know, it's a bit nebulous. You don't really quite know what it is. It doesn't, doesn't come to you as a sort of a all complete. He has to shape. He has to work that up. And I think this really comes through in this poem. Um, Francis did a little pamphlet, um, promotional pamphlet for Stay with, uh, Stay with God, and he gives a little critique of each of the books. And I actually think 
I'm sure he would have written it. Um, there's no one else around, and it has his fingerprints all over it, his sound and so on. And of this book he said, book two, the love song of John Kerry, Illusion Singing to Reality, is one of those curious and rare things in which pain and joy are so intermingled and perfectly balanced that the reader's individual self is subdued. That's great art, that can happen. Or laid aside, and all he knows is an unname unnameable quietness lit by a new and purer form of longing. So he actually takes you into an artistic, uh, into a realm, a feeling, an, an experience uh, of this piece here, through this poem. That's, I would say, is you know, great art, and you do get that, and you get it from balancing this joy and pain, the 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 the, the duality. The two opposites, the duality, and then when you get them in balance, you're elevated above another thing. You get this unnameable silence that gets above it. So um, that's what I think is going on here a little bit. But it's a beautiful poem, the way it moves. I've also broken it down a little bit, I think. Um, there seems to be a movement and um, where, where there's a change. And Francis always considered the line the big poetic event. It was the line which was important. Um, and that's the thought. There was a little bit of enjambment at times of the line may go over. But the line was the real measure. You, you, the line was with your thought and that's where you worked on the line. But there's a movement, I think, in these, this breakdown here. 2 to 7, 8 to 14, 15 to 21, 22 to 24. And it seems to, for my ear and eye and everything else, falls that way. Okay, and I was just going to really just go through some of them and have a look at some of them. Have a look at the text mm -hmm. together. Because I think some of this is his best writing. And that really is a precursor to the guzzles. This is where his longing really is coming out. Um, and we can relate to this. This is putting God Speaks into real life experience for me. This is giving life to God Speaks through a person. Each day of day drag or day flight curtained within the three curtains of sleep veil and dream veil and awake veil. That's our lot. Sleep the forgetter, dream the distortioner, and wakefulness the cruel concretizer who sets the dreams in solid form. The painter whose brush strokes are the bones mm. and whose colours, colour is the teeming <clears throat> flesh squeezed out of tubes of nerves. Mm. It's just great stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's really a surreal image you get to see this concrete up, and this is this is painted here. And you know, to feel, you know, this this world we live in, and you get to this point here where you can write a line like that. That's a desperateness there. You know, what what is there? This is our life. It's very existential and, and, and hard hitting. Mm. And this follows. Mm. But then the only thing that's real is to have God's presence, you know. He, he'd reached the end of that. Life was over in a sense. Something's going to happen. And he's, he's a seeker, of course, and he finds Baba. And Baba pierces deeply to his heart. Nursing the wound, nursing the wound, gazing with admiration on the face of a lovely spearman. He was saying to himself, small wonder and great wonder, things are as they are. And this business of everything and nothing. This business of being nothing and somebody. Nobody feeling he is something. Something, this is calling out now, in your hand, Baba, or else nothing before your feet. Give me one of those two. You know, this is all um, desperate stuff now. This is his love song. And then he's, he's talking to John. Um, and you get this <coughs> change now. He gives him some advice in a way. This is the, a, a turn with his fate. Turn in yourself, John. Bring back your eyes, fond, fond man, from restless visioning. Come centred now, bring it back in. What is it to you that an eye is furtive, a lip derisive, that people are sarcastic and stuff? That speech is ruined and no eyes lightning indicts the pages of books in lovely verse? 
don't worry about it. Become in your seeing blind, in your hearing deaf, or ever the lovely tide of spring will find you lip clinging to a clod of earth and your eyes stretched in an empty sky. You're going to be slaughtered out there. <laughs> Come back in here, you know. And then, of course, this goes deeply, and then Baba comes to see within him. Um, and this is a lovely thing, too, because it really is this play of Baba with God within him. His self is God, and it's himself, God, who gets mixed up in his life. You know, we are nothing but God. And we get caught up, and God gets the pain. So he's saying, become unstuck, God. It's you are the one who gets stuck in your entrancement, in your entrancement in which, in this which is called me. So it's not that there's God, there's me. It's, they're glued up together. And so he's saying, come unstuck. Um, so that your own love for yourself may be released in a clear stream. When that happens, I think that's when you get the moments of that is when art sings. Why do you why do you allow yourself to fall into error? And this is a complaint. This is a real Huffy's line. You know, what are you doing this? You allow me to do this, attaching yourself to everything you see through these eyes. You you're the one that's causing the problem here. You are the ever free, blissful one. I am the veil between yourself and me. Now that's the guzzle situation. That's the desperateness. You're doing it. Uh, I'm writing it for you, but I'm still here, damn it. Yeah. You know, I'm still in the pain of it all. I am the veil between yourself and me. Tear this veil which is between us. But if you cannot ask Baba to do it, he's my guide. Get him to do it for you. Beautiful stuff. Um, and then there's this other great line. Just how penetrating and piercing Francis is and his deep understanding of Baba and who, who he is and what he amounts to. Here's another sort of desperation going on here. It's no good talking to one who was the saying of the saying which one says, because he doesn't listen, because he knows exactly what he's going to say. So he's stuck again. He's everything, this God man. Uh, he's, what is he, just humoring us? Tired and tired of myself. To the wide expanse of the sky of your bosom my cry. Awake in my heart that I may love you with service, at least that. Else be dust at your feet, anything but this, not even nothing, nor a place in the everything, something, oh my child, my father. You know, the child that I think is nice, because that's a Baba being born in his heart, this child. You've got to be born there as a child coming through. Is that my bell? Okay, that's it. Five minutes, okay. Four. 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 Um, Okay, um, and then there's this beautiful line. Other people have quoted this. Um, the stars weep, and you have compassion on them and their dew on the grass. You give them that. The on the wheat fields too. The sun sinks in its shame, and you cover it with the hiding night. But my tears laugh at me, and my shame is naked before me. The prayers of the ant and the flame-loving moth are you answering. You answer them, and you give them activity and things to do, and so on. And the earth... Heavy earth turning are your guiding with infinite care. You're doing all this. Just a song in your praise or a mute adoration is not much of an asking, please. <laughs> because that's only real. He's just left with that. That's all he's got now that's real. Just if I can sing for you, I'd be totally happy. Just give me that. And then there's the last two great, rather Whitman esque lines with this great litany of things. Um, Someone complained to Whitman, he's just a, a compiler of lists and things. And the other person says, yeah, but what a list. <laughs> it was just fantastic. Um, you are the great, un and you get this negative and then the sort of positive. You are the great undoer, so that what shall be done, shall be done. This is so, so affirming. You are the remover who brings forth the stupefier who makes intelligent. The wind that levels the, the young wheat and stalks that make grow strong in the sun. And so on. And it goes on. Thou lovely one. It's just a beautiful praise. <coughs> this is that where at the beginning where it says you go off into this state now of sort of nearly transcendent of the, the self is put aside and you feel the stillness. That's what you get in these verses at the end here. 
There is this just pure praise, pure longing, not even longing or demanding, just declaring. The stone, thou stone cutter, thou gem cutter, thou potter and breaker of pots, thou upturner and returner, thou upheavaler and leveller, thou bender of what is straight, thou straightener of the bend, thou barber, thou lovely woman and glory man and child, thou moon knight, thou star knight, thou dawn swept of stars, thou morning of sun, Thou alone doer, thou adorable and adored, thou us, thou only alone self. It's a great ending. Mm -hmm. I actually feel the last verse, I don't want to get shot down here, really takes it away. It goes into, and so was John Carey ruminating about this. This is where the power is, it's in, it's in this verse. I would rather have finished it there because it has this great crescendo. Whoop. And then he goes, in, and so was John Kerry thinking about this. Mm -hmm. I think he loses it. Anyway, there it is. Mm -hmm. Anyone got a question? We've got a short question time available. Sorry. No, fine. You're on track. Right. Francis would want us on track. Mm -hmm. Well, to respond to your last point, I like that last stanza just because it creates the distance again. Okay. Okay. No other reason than that. This is the crescendo for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like it that he. It's a little coda. It's, it's a little. A little yeah, it's a little coda again. A musical thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does have a great line in that too. You know, that she behind and swallow by breath. It's a nice yes, line. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. In, in the wind of the word, I, the way I remember it is there's actually two versions, and Francis does the same thing in the wind of in the wind of the word, that long autobiographical poem. He. He finishes it in a very helpful way, and then in a later version, he adds another stanza which has that same quality that you're talking about, Ross. So, kind of bring it back down to earth and down to the prosaic. Yeah, yeah. It has the same quality. And I, I was disappointed with the second version. I like the punchy end on the first version. Yeah. Well, how about this one? Do you like the punchy end here, or do you like the. I, I, had, no, I haven't thought about that. I'll have to reflect on that. Let's have a match. There's, a, there's, a, there's another seven hour. There's another seven hour walk. That's right. We can duke it out. Catch fire. <laughs> Yeah. He sort of he locates him in the journey too when he says, and he was recognizing that this was the beginning of those subtractions. Yeah, that's true. So it's kind of like yeah, he's bringing it back down. <laughs> yeah, it's a start. Yeah. No, there's pros and cons. But just good as as good as before. Oh, yeah.